Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Yemi Be'a Yud Zayin. We begin two lines from the top of the Amit Tanu Rabbanu and we learn to Nebraisa. How do we go about Davani Shemayin Esrei on a Yom Tov Shechol Liyos B'Shabbos? You have Yom Tov on Shabbos. So we're speaking of the Yom Tov itself, not Chol HaMoyed. First or last day of Yom Tov falls out on Shabbos itself. How do we accommodate Shabbos and Yom Tov together? Be'Shami Imrim Mispalal Shemayin they say you add a bracha in your tefillah Shemana Esrei in honor of Yom Tov. So instead of your typical seven brachas, which we say on Shabbos, right, the first standard three, the last standard three, and we add a seventh in the middle for Shabbos, you're going to add another one. Yet another bracha for Yom Tov for a total of eight brachas in your Shemana Esrei. One on account of Shabbos and one on account of Yom Tov. V'oimer shal Shabbos b'fnei atzma. You make a special bracha in the middle of Yishman Esri for Shabbos, and one is for Yom Tov. No. You wrap them together in one bracha. Mispalal Sheva, all you do is Tefillah Yishman Esri, which has seven brachas, the first three, the last three standard, and the middle one is Kedusha Sayyim, relating to the day's Kedusha, day's event, and you wrap together Shabbos with Yom Tov. Maschal B'Shal Shabbos. You initiate that middle bracha by referencing Shabbos. Umasai M'Shal Shabbos. And you conclude with a chasima referencing Shabbos. Baruchat HaShem M'Kadosh HaShabbos. V'oimer Kedusha Sayyim Ba'emtza. And in the middle of that bracha, you make reference to Yom Tov. V'atitin Lano HaShem Lekeinu. Shabbos and Yom Tov. So according to Beis Hillel's version, it's only seven brachas. So the middle bracha, which is generally for Shabbos, will include Yom Tov as well, but only in the middle of it, not in the beginning or the end. We don't want to make a double mentioning at the end of a bracha. You're not meant to make a chasima directed at two things. So you're chasim mikadosh Shabbos. Rabbi Omer, no, av chasim ba mikadosh Shabbos Yisrael v'azmanim. Going to Rabbi. You can't overlook Yom Tov. Even during the Chasimah, you made to make reference to Yom Tov. Mekadosh HaShabbos, Hashem was Mekadosh HaShabbos, and Yisrael, who are Mekadosh, the, the Zmanim. So apparently, according to Rebbe, it's not considered a, a double Chasimah, because the Iker Kedusha is Shabbos. Yom Tov is sort of a, a secondary Kedusha in reference to Shabbos. So it works. Mikadash Hashabbos, Yisrael ve'azman. Tani Tana Kamei Ravina. There was a Chacham who presented to Ravina the following version of the Chasim. He meant to say like this: Mikadash Yisrael. So first comes Yisrael ve'ashabbos ve'azman. That was his version of events. So following by Silo, Shabbos, which happens to be Yom Tov, will only have a seven bracha Shemana Esrei. The middle bracha will, will relate to Shabbos and Yom Tov. And we're following the Shita of Rebbe that you want to mention Yom Tov and the Chasimah as well. But do it in this order. Mekadesh Yisrael, and then Shabbos Vazman. Amr Leis Ravina responded, that's incorrect. Atu Shabbos. Do you mean to say that the Kedusha Shabbos comes about through Yisrael? That's incorrect. Atu Shabbos Yisrael Mekachelay. The fact that you say Baruch Atah Hashem Mekadish Yisrael, so they're the source, so to speak, and they generate the Kedusha of Shabbos and Zmanim. Atu Shabbos Yisrael Mekachelay. That's incorrect. But Shabbos Mekachevakaima. We know that the Kedusha Shabbos is is absolute. From Sheshis may be before Yisrael came about. That's not something that Yisrael generate. Yom Tovim, yes. Because we make the, the calendar. We generate the the season, the Zmanim, and the Yom Tovim. But not Shabbos. El Amos Ravina corrects him. Say as follows. Baruch Hashem, Mekadesh HaShabbos. So Hashem is the Mekadesh HaShabbos. And then Yisrael who are Mekadesh v'hazmanim, the Yom Tovim, which follow. Amrav Yosef, halachah ke In fact, we follow Rebbe's version, which is 
do mention Shabbos and Yom Tov in the Chasima. Or could the Torah to Rabbeinu, as Rabbeinu explained, the correct order is Mekadosh HaShabbos, which comes through Hashem, and then Hashem is Mekadosh the Yisrael, who generate the Kedusha of the Zmanim. I once saw a word from a Shrag of Five of Mendelitz, the founder of Teir Vedas. He says, where, from where do we Yisrael get the Kedusha to give over, to generate Yom and Tov? We get it from Shabbos. So Shabbos is the source of Kedusha in the world. Hashem is the Mekadosh HaShabbos, and that Kedusha extends into Yisrael, who then take that Kedusha and generate Yom and Tov. So it's Mekadosh HaShem Mekadosh HaShabbos, the Yisrael of Azmanu. So this is when Yom Tov falls out on Shabbos. What about if we have a Shabbos with Chayl HaMoyed, Shabbos with Rosh Chodesh, Tan Rabban, Shabbos, Shechol Yisbir Rosh Chodesh, or Bechol Yisrael Moyed, if Shabbos falls out on Rosh Chodesh, or Chayl HaMoyed, how do we dive in Shemun Esra? Says the Tanakhama, it depends. Arvis v'shachar s'mincha mispal al-sheva. When it's Arvis v'shachar s'mincha, we dive in the uh, standard Tfilah Shemun Esri of Shabbos, which consists of seven brachas. First three, last three, and the middle one, which relates to Shabbos. And in order to accommodate with Shchidish, we say something which reflects the event, the occasion. When do we say that? The bracha which describes the avoid, the carbon is Ritzay. Omar, if he failed to say Yalav Yavoy, he has to repeat Shmanestra. Yalav Yavai is meant to be said Bahida doing Moidim, like by Al Hanisim. So going to Tanakama, the reason why we say Yalav Yavai is on account of the Karbanas that are brought about on uh, that are brought on Yom um, Shchedesh and Chayla Moid. So that belongs in the Bracha of Karbanas of Avoida. Reb Lezer relates the the Yalav Yavai to the to the occasion to mark the the Yom Tif. and that belongs in Haida. We thank Hashem for giving us these occasions. So this is when, by Arvish Shachos or Mincha, we don't go into uh, Yalav, into Rosh Chodesh and Chaylamoid in great detail, we just uh, make a slight mentioning Yalav Yavu. As opposed to Musaf of a So it's Shabbos Chaylamoid or Shabbos Rosh Chodesh, and it's Musaf time now. We have to relate to Chaylamoid or to Rosh Chodesh in a more serious fashion. Why? So I should explain because. Let's say Rosh Chodesh is during a weekday. We don't do anything special for Rosh Chodesh except for Yalav Yavai, if it's Shachris, Mincha, or Mairav. Likewise, if it's Shabbos, a slight mentioning is enough. However, Musaf, where Rosh Chodesh gets a Musaf. If Rosh Chodesh falls out on a Tuesday, you have extra tefillah due to Rosh Chodesh. Chalamoid falls out on a Tuesday, you add a tefillah some Musaf on account of the Karbonat, Bron Chalamoid. So Chalamoid generates a new tefillah. So now we have to take it seriously. Now we really have to uh, mention more than just the Yalav Yavai. So when we have a Shabbos, Rosh Chodesh, Shabbos Chalamoid, Ubi Mesaf, and it comes Musaf, we have to be more, be more generous. Maschal B'Shal Shabbos. So again, we have a seven bracha tefillah, like your standard Shabbos, but we're going to make reference, more direct reference to the occasion, to Chalamoid or Rosh Chodesh, in that bracha, not just a Yalav Yavai slight mentioning, but within the bracha, the middle bracha of Musaf, you're going to relate to the day's event. Ubi Musaf and Maschal B'Shal Shabbos. So you begin the bracha re- referencing Shabbos. Ubi Musaf and B'Shal Shabbos. And you conclude with Shabbos as well. Bracha Tashem B'Kadosh Shabbos. So this is in line with the um, Tanakama earlier, Beis Hillel, who said that during Chasimah, during conclusion, we only make reference to Shabbos. And of course, in the middle of that bracha, in the middle of the middle bracha of Musaf, we refer to the uh, day's event, to the occasion of Shchedesh Shachalamoid. So only by Musaf do we do, do we do that. Because again, Musaf is something which is, which does relate to Shchedesh, which has a carbon Musaf. Shchedesh generates a tefillah on Musaf during the weekdays. So when it comes out on Shabbos, Musaf relates to Shabbos and to Cholomayr as well, so you have to make direct mentioning in the bracha. Rabbi Shem Gamliel, Rabbi Shmo Bnoi Shal Rabbi Yochanan Broik Aimer, they disagree. They extend it further. Kol Mokem Shuluska Kol Sheva, 
throughout all the tefillas of Shabbos, all the seven bracha tefillas of Shabbos, namely Shachos, Mincha, Arvis, and of course Musaf, Maschel b'shal Shabbos, Umasayim b'shal Shabbos, Vo'im Mekdush Azayim Be'emtze. There's all difference between Musaf and the other tefillas. Whenever you have a tefillah on Shabbos, you make direct mentioning of Rosh Chedesh or Chedam in the middle of that middle brach. Omar of Huna, Eina Lacha Kaisa Azug, we don't follow the shita of this pair, rather we follow Tanakama, only during Musaf, which relates to Rosh Chedesh, which has a connection to Chedam Moed, which have a carbon Musaf as well, do we make direct mention during the brach, but otherwise, a Yal of Yavi suffices. Now, Taisus points out, the Lashna Gemara here, it seems a little bit uh, interesting. Why ain't Allah Kaisa Zuk? Sort of on the negative uh, uh, ring. We don't follow this Zuk. Why doesn't the, the Gemara just say Halacha Tanakama? So he says the reason is because the Gemara wants us to make a double mention during the Chasima as well. You see, the Tanakama or Rav Shimon over here says that by Musaf, of Shabbos Rosh Chodesh, or Shabbos Chal Moed, we're going to make mention of the Ma'ina Ma'ira during that bracha, but only in the middle. The Chasimah will be only Shabbos, and that's why the Gemara doesn't want to paskin like that Shita, because the Gemara holds like the previous Shita mentioned earlier of Rebbe, that we make a double mentioning in the Chasimah as well. During the conclusion of that middle bracha, we'll make a double reference to Shabbos and to the Yom Tif, whether it's Yom Tif Chal Moed or Rosh Chodesh. That's why we say, we don't follow this pair which means that during Arvis, Shachras, and Mincha, we don't have to say more than al Yavai. It only applies to Musaf. We have to actually include the Me'ina Mo'ir in the Bracha. But it's not exactly like the Tanakam over here. Rather, we go back to the other Shita of Rebbe, that during the Chasima, we must make mention of the Yom Tev as well. Okay, so in, uh, in summation, Shabbos falls out on Yom Tev. We have three shittas, how to go about which monastery. Going to be Shami, it's going to end up being a eight bracha monastery. We're going to add a bracha in the middle for Shabbos and a bracha for Yom Tov. Going to be a silo, it remains seven. In the middle of bracha, you're going to incorporate Yom Tov. You begin and end with Shabbos and insert Yom Tov into the middle of that bracha. Going to Rebbe, in Ravina's version, you stick with seven brachas. Now, the middle bracha is fashioned as follows. You start with Shabbos, you insert Yom Tov in the middle, and you conclude by mentioning Shabbos and Yom Tov. How do you do it? Ekadish HaShabbos, Yisrael V'Azmanim. If Shabbos follows out, Rosh Chodesh Rechol HaMoyed, you have two shittas. And the Kama says, when it's Arv HaShachos HaMincha, we have the standard uh, seven bracha, Shemun Esrei, we insert Yalav Yavai, either during Avoida, which is Ritzei Hashem Lekenu, or Kodesh Blazer B'Moidim. It's only by Musaf, which is really also a seven bracha tefillah, that we make a more elaborate reference to the day's event, Rosh Chodesh, Shochel HaMoid. So the middle bracha is fashioned as follows. It begins and ends with Shabbos. And in the middle, you insert the Kedush HaSayoy, meaning the, uh, you mark the day's occasion. According to Hashem Lil and Rishmo B'Noi, Shev Lechem Broika, Throughout all the tefillahs of that Shabbos, be it Arvis, Shachas, Mincha, Musaf, you're going to incorporate the day's event into that middle bracha, you begin and end with Shabbos, and Kedush HaSayoy, meaning referring to Rosh Chodesh Shachal HaMoyed, will be inserted in the middle of that bracha. Continues the Gemara. Om Rav Chibar Ashi Marav. Suppose you have a two-day Yom Tov in Chutz Lourdes, which fall out on a Thursday and a Friday. You'd like to have an Erev Tchumen, for Shabbos, you want to leave town on Shabbos. And we know that Erev Tchumen is activated during Ben Hashemoshes of the previous night. So if you want the Erev to work for Shabbos, you have to have it placed on, Erev, on Ben Hashemoshes. Now it's, it's Yom Tov, a two-day Yom Tov. You cannot make an Erev on Yom Tov for Shabbos. You can't prepare on Yom Tov for Shabbos. You can't become a Shvisa on Yom Tov for Shabbos. So what do you do? The answer is, since it's only a suffolk, one of these days are yantiv, the other one isn't. 
So you do it conditionally, as follows. Omar Khibar Ashimarav. Mani Yahadam Irubit Khuman Miyatul Khavir. Umasna. You can establish an air of Tchuman from one day to the next. When the Sisun and Rashi had us works, with conditioning, make it tonight, and then you'll have it for Shabbos. So that's Eruv Tchumen. Amar Rava, likewise, Manech Adam Eruv Tavshilin, Miyantav Chaveru Masn. You can do the same regarding Eruv Tavshilin. Place it on one day for the next. What day tonight? Let's go over to Rashi, off to the right. Miyantav Chaveru. So we have a two-day Yantav. Thursday and Friday. Imnis Kabri Yantav Rishon. He becomes aware on the first day of Yantav that he hadn't yet placed an Eruv Tchumen. And he has two days, Thursday and Friday. He can make an Erev with a tonight. And he says like this. This is by Erev Tchumen. So he puts the bread right outside the uh, city. If today is not Yom Tov, if Thursday is a weekday, and tomorrow, Friday, is the real Yom Tov, Erev Erev. So the Erev is activated now, tonight, during Ben Hashemoshes. Because now it's a uh, Yom Chayl. I'm allowed to do what I need. Vim Chilov. If. Sorry, this is Erev Tavshil. Let's start with Erev Tavshil. So he puts down Erev Tavshil on Thursday and he says, look, uh, the reason why he needs it is to enable him to cook on Friday for Shabbos. So if Friday is Yom Tov, he needs to prepare Erev Tavshil before Friday. So he says, look, if today is not really Yom Tov, it's really Erev Yom Tov, tomorrow is Yom Tov. So let's just backtrack. If today is Choyl and tomorrow is really Kaddish, Eruv be Eruv. So it's a legitimate Eruv. It's before Yom Tov. I can still place the Eruv Tavshilim. And I'll be able to cook tomorrow. What if it's the other way around? If today is Kaddish and tomorrow Friday is Choyl. Well, any Tzarech Eruv. Any Tzarech La'er Tavshilim. Now, of course, I don't need an Eruv Tavshilim because tomorrow is no longer Yom Tov. It's an ordinary Friday. I can cook for Shabbos. So that's how he goes, goes about doing the Erev Tavshilin with this condition. Ubi Tchumen, when it comes to Erev Tchumen, Yom will say like this, Im Hayom Kodesh, if today, Thursday is Kodesh, Im I haven't said anything. I'm not making the Erev. Ulamacha Yom Kemaikin, Bishal Tchumen. And likewise, tomorrow he'll say the same thing. Because this is different than Erev Tavshilin. Over here he certainly needs the Erev Tchumen. Whether today is Yom Tov or tomorrow is Yom Tov, he needs the Erev Tchumen for Shabbos. The problem is he can't establish Erev Tchumen on a Yom Tov for Shabbos. Okay, so I'll say, if today is Yom Tov, I didn't say anything. If tomorrow is Yom Tov, then today I'm making the Erev. Tomorrow I'll have to do the same thing. I'll say, look, if yesterday was Yom Tov, then I'm doing it now. If today is Yom Tov, I did it yesterday. Uboi Sa'pas Atzma, using the same loaf of bread. I'll make that double tonight to cover both possibilities. Do me mona shachav Erev. Because either way, the, the Erev is valid and legal. Oh, but <laughs> you don't have to redo the uh, uh, formula tomorrow. It doesn't have to repeat this procedure tomorrow. I can explain because <laughs> it doesn't need it. If tomorrow is not Kodesh. So it's a single condition. Meaning, if today is Chol, I make Erev Tavshil. If today is Kodesh, leave it alone. I don't need Erev Tavshil to cook tomorrow, which is Chol. But Erev Tuchum has to make that double prong condition. Because he needs the Erev Tuchman for Shabbos to walk uh, out of the Tuchman Shabbos. The problem is he can't place the Erev Tuchman on Yom Tov. So he says, look, if today is Yom Tov, I haven't said anything. And tomorrow I'll say, well, if today is Yom Tov, I'm not saying anything. So on the first day, if today is Yom Tov, I didn't say anything, it's going to work the next day. Come the next day, he'll say, look, if today is Yom Tov, then I did it yesterday. If yesterday is Yom Tov, I'm doing it now. So he's covering all possibilities, and that air will become activated for Shabbos. Okay, so the Gemara is telling us a Chiddush, that when you have a double day, a double Yom Tov, you can go ahead and condition things. And this way you have Erev Tuchumen and Erev Tavshil. Continues the Gemara. Manda Omar Eruv Tuchumen, the one who maintains that you can apply this formula to enable you to make an Erev Tuchumen on Yom Tov, Koshkin Erev Tavshil. Of course, Erev Tavshil can work Along the same lines. Uman the Omer Ruvah Tavshilin. But the one who said that he could do it for Erev Tavshilin, which was Rava. Only Erev Tavshilin works. 
We don't allow it. Why not? Seems like the uh, system works very well. What's wrong with doing this? My time. Why not? The fact is that you're getting involved in any procedure which is koina. You're acquiring a Shabbos residence out in the field. That's what Rav Tchumen is meant to do. It's meant to create a Mokum Shvisa outside. You're creating. You're acquiring. And since today is Yom Tov, you're not meant to get involved in doing these things. So therefore, we don't allow making an Erev Tchumen even on condition. The fact is, you're observing Yom Tov today, Misafet, and going ahead and doing this whole uh, system to be Koine Shvisa appears like you're doing Kenyan, like you're acquiring, and should not be done on Yom Tov. As opposed to Erev Tav Shilin, which isn't really a kinin, it's just a, to generate awareness. It makes a hacker. That's okay on Yom Tov itself. Ton Rabban. Here comes the Chiddush. We know that in Yom Yom Tov Chaver. We may not bake bread from the first day of Yom Tov to the second. So we have a two-day Yom Tov in Chutz Laretz. One day is Kodesh, one day isn't. So you can't bake on one day for the next, because perhaps today is Yom Tov and tomorrow isn't. You're not allowed to. Bake on Yom for a weekday. Be'emes Amru, however, the following clerical halacha was said. Although you can't bake specifically for tomorrow or cook for tomorrow, but you can do it in the following manner. Memal isha kolakadera basr. The isha has to cook one cut of meat. She can go and fill the entire pot with meat. Even though she knows full and well, I only need one piece. It's called marbe b'shi'urin. You just increase in quantity. Since you have to cook in a legitimate fashion for Yom Tov, you can go and increase the capacity, the quantity, with tomorrow in mind. Likewise, me'male nachtam n'chavishal mayim. A nachtam, a baker, a cook, can fill up a barrel of water and heat that water. Ava b'shi'en etzorach al-kitan echad. Even though he knows full and well, he only needs one jug for today. You can increase the shear for the purpose of tomorrow. Avala efois, but when it comes to baking, where each loaf is separate, a separate baking process, a separate removal from the oven, then it doesn't work. You can only bake what you need for today. Now, what's the pshat in this head of Marba Bashur? Says the run, I'll give you two pshat. Firstly, in contrast to the heter to cook on Shabbos for Pukuch Nefesh. Then the Gemara clearly tells us you have to minimize. You can only do what's absolutely needed and necessary for Pukuch Nefesh. You can't go and increase. You can't be marbred the sheer beyond what you need. And that's because over there it's Duchuya. You're just pushing away, you're pushing aside Shabbos on account of saving a life which stands higher. It's only Duchuya, so you do what's necessary and that's it. It's sort of with difficulty that's being done. Whatever is absolutely necessary, as opposed to Yom Tov, says the run. Eichel Nefesh is not Duchuya, it's not Bidi Eved, it's not out of necessity with difficulty, it's a Heter Lachat Chila. And therefore he says, once it's Muta to do this cooking process on this pot, go ahead, add as much as you want. The mice is called a Maise Heter. So once you're allowed to cook, it doesn't matter how much you're cooking. Once you let it heat water, it doesn't matter how much. But when it comes to baking, where each loaf stands separately, there's no heter. The heter of one loaf doesn't extend to the other. That's the Tanakam. Rabbi Shimon, no, even when it comes to loaves of bread, at times we allow you to do more than you need. You can fill the entire oven with bread. Why? Because the fuller the oven is, the hotter it is, and the better the, bake, the, the bread bakes. Therefore, he says, even if it involves an extra tircha, that's the machlaik, according to Anakama, you can't do an extra tircha, an extra mass. But according to him, Shimon, even if it involves an extra tircha, but since it benefits your uh, original loaf of bread, which you need for today, that allows you to go ahead and increase and add more and more, which is beneficial for today's yomtev bread. Amarava, 
Halacha, Rabbi Shimon Alazar, we follow this as the Halacha. Iboil, listen to the Shadah. Mi shalohi ne'echeru v'tavshil. Suppose a person did not make an Erev. So he can't cook or bake on Yom Tov Shabbos. How far does that restriction extend? Is it only personal? Or do we apply to his supplies as well, to his bread, to his flour, etc.? Hu ne'asar v'kim ch'ne'asar. Should we say that he can't prepare? And likewise, his flour can't be used for baking on Yom Tov for the sake of Shabbos. It's like Erev Tuchum. A person is limited to his Tuchum and likewise his possessions. Does the same apply to Erev Tavshilin? If you don't have Erev Tavshilin, you can't prepare on Yom Tov for Shabbos. But does it apply to your supplies as well? Oidim, or perhaps Hu Nasser himself can't do. But the Enkim Chenasser, the Issa doesn't apply itself to his supplies. Somebody else can go ahead and use his supplies for Shabbos. Manaf Kimina, what's the difference? The Knuya Kimchalachir. Do we say that he has to give away his flour to others if somebody chooses to use his supplies? He has to give it away. And that enables the other person to do it because if it remains his, you can't use my flour because the Issa that I have extends to my flour as well. So he has to give it away to enable its use. If you work with the assumption that the Yisra applies to him and his supplies, so the only way that somebody else can use his supplies and Yomta for Shabbos is through a kinyan, through acquisition. Then it becomes that person and not mine. Sorochla kinu yikim chlachem has to give it away. But if you'll say, who nasser, ven kim chenasser, Yisra applies to the person, but not to his supplies. Sorochla kinu yikim chlachem, then others can use his flower without actually doing a kinyan. My, so what is the uh, conclusion here? Does the Isser apply to him personally and also to his supplies? Or is it only a personal Isser? Tashma, listen to this Raya. The Raya says, Mi tafshil. If one did not make an Erev, he shouldn't bake, he'll not cook, nor can't he even, he can't even insulate hot food on Yom for the sake of Shabbos. Loy loy, not for his own benefit, nor for others. V'loy acherim loy. Nor can others cook and bake on his behalf. Keita do So, um, what is he meant to do to get around this? Makna kim He can give away his flour, give it b'matana to others. Now it becomes theirs. It's no longer restricted. They can go ahead and bake and cook for his for his benefit. Shema minu. We have arrived from here. Who nasar bekim chenasar shema minu. The Isra applies not only to himself but also to his supplies. The only way to get around it is by giving it away to others who have already made Erev Tafshil. Now, Tayshas disagrees. He says, I don't understand. If the Isra applies to his supplies as well, then how could he go ahead and make a kin and give it to others? How is he going to remove the Isra, which has already been applied to his supply, to his flower? So that's why Tayshas learns the Gemara differently. He says like this, You have a Shiloh, does this apply to him and to his supply or not? And then Afkamina is like this. If it's only personal and not on his kemach, then he can give it to others. So going to Tosis, if it's not going to be applied to his supplies, he can give it to others. Because he can't bake, but they could. However, if the Isra applies itself to him and to his supplies, then his kemach remains Asr. He cannot give it to others. That's why Tosis learns the Gemara. And the raya of the Gemara is that the, from the fact that we see that you can give it to others, that was uh, how the Brysa presented it. If you fail to make it, give it away to others and have them cook for you. The fact that you can't give it away is a raya that it's only in a personal Isra. Who Nasser, but ain't Kim Nasser. Different than the way we have the Gears in the Gemara. It's personal and not going to apply itself on his Kemach, and therefore you can give it away to others. Let them cook and bake on his behalf. Continues the Gemara. Iboilu, listen to this child. Oh, varva of man. This fellow didn't make an Erev. And he transgressed. He cooked, he baked. On Yom Tov for Shabbos. Does it become Asr? Or can he eat it on Shabbos? Tashma, listen to this right, the price that we just mentioned. Mishalo yiniach Erev Tavshil. If a person failed to place Erev Tavshil, Kaysa the Oisa, what's the solution? Makna kim chalacherem. He'll give away his flour. Vacherem. Oif and loy mamash and loy. And have others... They can cook on his behalf. 
Tim is now if you shall propose that if a person was over the person himself was over and prepared it's mutter but the avid if that's true we're looking for a solution to the problem why don't the bryson mention that as well listen the bryson should have said this fellow failed to make an erev over of a mutter if he went ahead and did for shabbos he cooked and baked he can have it omar of adabar masa no tom is not discussing cases where he transgressed looking for the solutions giving away flour is the but to speak about somebody who was over and cooked and baked against the Takana of Chacham, we're not discussing that fellow. Tana, our Tana Takanta, the Eteric Tana, is discussing permissible solutions. Takanta, the Yisur, like Tana, not discussing solutions as a result of Yisurim. So you have no Raya one way or the other. Tashma, listen to this Raya. Mi she'nechiru tafshilin. If a person did make an Erev, harazo oife, umavasho, umatman, he can cook, bake, and insulate food on Yom Tov for Shabbos. If he chooses to eat his Erev on Yom Tov, go ahead, no problem. Now, if he consumed the Erev before he got a chance to bake or to cook, or actually hit him before he insulated, <laughs> shows over. He can no longer prepare for Shabbos. can't cook, bake, or be matman. Not for himself, nor for others. Nor can others bake and cook for him using his supplies. But he can go ahead. Should he realize that he needs some food for Yom Tov, he can go ahead and take a huge pot for Yom Tov, for today, and add and add and fill the pot entirely with Shabbos in mind. If there's anything left over, that's motor, can use it for Shabbos. As long as he doesn't uh, use a pretense, which means this fellow really doesn't need anything for Yom Tov. He's done. He's finished his Suda. He'll go ahead and say, you know what, uh, maybe I need something for today, knowing that he doesn't. He'll pretend, he'll employ a ploy here. And using that high rumor, he's going to say, okay, um, I have to still cook for Yom Tov, and I'll go fill a huge pot with Shabbos in mind. If he does that, it's also Rim Erem. If he proceeded with that type of ploy, also, we don't allow him to eat that food on Shabbos. Oh, so it's a clear raya that if he cooked or baked without an Erem, it's also. Omer Avashi, no, no comparison. Haramah Ka'amras, he's speaking about a fellow who's pretending. That's worse than transgression. Shani Haramah. Haram is different. Listen to this. By haram, by ploying, by pretending. It's even worse than outright neglect. Why? How could it be? Says Rashi. Two, three lines up. Shani haram. Perhaps a person cooked or baked without an air. It's mutter, but the avid. It's only a din la You have to create a hacker, etc. But the avid, it's not awesome. Don't bring me a rye from this fellow who pretended. That's worse. The shani haroma mi mezid. Haroma is worse than mezid. Why? The ikalamema. We can say there's room to think. Achmu barabbanan baroma tvei mi mezid. Chachamu more strict with a fellow who's a ma'arim, who's a pretender, than a person who outright is over on the iser. It's worse to pretend than to be over. Why? The ilu mezid. Rasha, lava al chacham. Understand? He's a Rasha. He's over the iser. He disregarded the rabban. Nobody's going to learn from him. This guy's a Rasha. Not only that, who atzma mesim al liboy. He himself will feel guilty eventually. You know what? I did an iser. Well, what's wrong with me? Veshavu duchu. Hilkach leim akrateres erev. It's not going to bring about uh, destruction of the concept of erev. People won't learn from him. He himself will turn back sooner or later. That's why amazing. But by Marim, he's fooling himself. Aval Marim suffer last better. He thinks, oh, I'm a big tzaddik. I'm doing it the right way. I'm allowed to do it now. So, he's never going to turn back. He's a tzaddik. He's a yosher be'enov. Not only that, others will learn from him. 
They can do this. It's going to get in the way. It's going to find the face of the concept of Erev. Hilka Katsura Bono Chachamim applied a penalty. <laughs> okay, so we see that Ha'arama is certainly Asr. Regarding Mezid, Lav Davka. Maybe Ha'arama is worse than, worse than Mezid. Continues the Gemara. Rav Nachmar Yitzhak Amar. He says, I'll give you a different terrace. We found a Bryce where we learned that even with the evidence Asr, I found a Tan who was very machmer when it comes to Erev Tavshilin, Hanania, according to Beit Shammai. And perhaps just as a machmer, over there is machmer over here that be the evidence also, but perhaps according to other shitas, it wouldn't be so. The sun. Where do we find this uh, shita which is machmer by Erev Tavshilin? Hanania Oimer. That Beit Shammai Oimer. Ain Oifen, Elam can Erev a pass. You want to bake on Yom Tov for the following Shams? It's only if you set aside. A baked item before Yom Tov. So baked allows baking. Vein The only way to cook on Yom Tov for Shabbos is Elohim Kain Erev Betavshel. If you set aside a cooked food before Yom Tov. So cooked food allows you to cook. Vein Taim. Likewise, if you want to insulate some hot item on Yom Tov for Shabbos, you can't do that unless Elohim Kain Hayuchamen Tmunin Merav Yom Tov. You had some insulation before Yom Tov as well. So according to Chanan, it's version of Beishamai. You need to be specific when you establish the Erev Tavshilin. If you want to cook, you have to set aside a cooked food. If you want to bake, set aside a baked item as well. You want to do Atmana, begin your Atmana before Yom Tov. We basically say, that's not necessary. Ma'arev betavshil echad. Just take one cooked food and put it aside. Voice of a katsarach and do whatever you need. In any case, we find a shita which is machmer, chananya, beshamay. Therefore, it says of nachmer yitzchak, perhaps the previous price, which says that it cooked be iser. The item is also it's this shita which is machmer. So we still have a shail. What happens if he doesn't have an erev and he cooks? Is it also or not? Continues the Gemara. Toshma, listen to this right. A mission in Trumas. I'm aser peroisa b'shabbos. We know that one is not meant to separate truma and master on Shabbos. It looks like he's being masakin, like he's fixing. If he did it, what happens now? Yoich b'shoyeg yoich. If he did it inadvertently, you can do it. You can eat it. V'meiz lo yoichal. If it was deliberate, you can't eat it. So we see that when you're over in Isidur Abbanim, Chacham wa Machmer, even in the face of Enoch Shabbos. So perhaps when it comes to Erev Tavshim as well, well it's perhaps that Mishnah speaking, where he has access to other fruit, he's not going to be Mavatlo Enoch Shabbos entirely. So that's why Machmer don't have these fruit. But perhaps when it comes to our case, where the only fruit he has is this, Maybe it's Mutra on Shabbos. Tashma, listen to this raya. Hamat bel kalev. B'Shabbos. We know that a person is not meant to be toy bel kalev on Shabbos. Rashi says, Nero ki mesak, he's fixing, he's fashioning, he's enabling its use. You don't want to get involved in that on Shabbos. What if he did it? B'Shoigig yishtamashpen. If it was done B'Shoigig, unknowingly, you can use it. B'Mezid, lo yishtamashpen. So we see that, Racham wa machmer, even in the context of Anik Shabbos, don't use your kalev on Shabbos if you were over Isidra Baron. Perhaps. By Erev as well, if he cooked, be Isser, it's Asr. Let's drink at Isleim on Achrini, perhaps that's speaking, where he has other kale accessible. So fine, use the other one instead of this one, as opposed to food on Shabbos. This is only supply. Perhaps it doesn't become Asr, Inami, or perhaps Asher B'Sheel, can borrow somebody else's kale. In any case, you're not limiting him. He still has kale around, as opposed to our case, where this is the only food that he has. Perhaps it does not become also listen to this right to Shema. I'm a vashal b'Shabbos. If one should cook on Shabbos, b'Shoigeik Yoichel. If it was done b'Shoigeik, can eat that food. B'Meizid lo Yoichel. If it was done b'Meizid, can eat it on Shabbos. So we see a chamo machmer. If one did an isur, he can't use it on Shabbos. Perhaps erev as well. No, he surah the Shabbos shani. That's different because bishul on Shabbos. That's an isur deraisa. It generates skila. Therefore, the chamo applied a knas to a meizid as opposed to cooking and baking on Yom Tov. For the sake of Shabbos, which isn't the Issa de Rais, I'll explain it back at the beginning of the Masechta, that Menat Torah, there's no Issa, for one or two reasons, just briefly, either because the concept of Ahoyl, there's always a chance that guests might show up at the end of the day, at the end of Yantav, and will be Roy for them, so this is considered Eichel Nefesh. So Menat Torah, not over. Or the other shot was because Shabbos and Yantav are really one continuous Zman of Kedusha entity. So Menat Torah, there's no concern. It's only Midir Abban, as we explained at the beginning of the, of the Perik. We had two reasons. One was so that 
it's clear that you can't just do anything on Yom Tov for a weekday. Because look, the only way I can do anything today for tomorrow for Shabbos is because I began preparing before Shabbos, before Yom Tov. So I'm only concluding this that brings out, that generates awareness and safeguards the Kedushas Yom Tov. The other shot was set aside something before Yom Tov for Shabbos so that you don't overlook Shabbos while you're celebrating, celebrating Yom Tov. Don't uh, deplete your entire supply for Yom Tov. Make sure you leave something nice for Shabbos. So either way, it's a Tachanos Chazal. And therefore, perhaps, even B'di Yavid, if it was B'di Yavid, the ayah does not become Asr. So Yisura, the Shabbos Shani, perhaps when it comes to Shabbos, which is the rice, that's worse. But by Yom Tov, only said the Rabbanon, you won't say that it's Asr B'di Yavid. So we leave it without a uh, uh, conclusion here. Okay, so what uh, what exactly constitutes Erev Tavshil? Bishama, I remember Tavshil need two cooked dishes, sort of a, a menu which appears like a true Shabbos preparation. But basically, one Tavshil is enough. So it's two or one. Mas Nisan Tana. Apparently, our mission is not in line with the following Tana, who had a different edition of the Machlekes Bishama Bishil. The Sami, Om Rav Shimon Lazar, Moedim Bishama Bishil. They both agree. Al Shnei Tavshil and Shetzerach. You need. Two tafshilan for erev tafshilan. Aman echel. What then? What are they arguing about? In a very specific case, should we treat it like two tafshilan or like one? Al dog, you have a fish. Ubeit sheolav glazed with egg. Shebeshama oimim shnei tafshilan. You need two cooked dishes. This is just one. Doesn't really conform. Doesn't qualify. Ubeit hilo oimim tafshil echad. Ubeit hilo say that. And this uh, single tafshil is enough, meaning we treat it like two separate entities. The fish, one, and the egg is one. The say, no, it's bottle to the fish. It doesn't really constitute, it's not considered two. So that's all the machlaikas applies to. You have a sort of combination, two tafshil and combined together. Is it considered like two or like one? That's the machlaikas. But everybody agrees you need two. It has to look like initiation of Shabbos preparation. One tafshil, that's not the cover Shabbos. Two. Oh, we see you uh, getting serious preparing for Shabbos. The Shabbos now all agree in the following case. Shem pir pir If he took a cooked egg and diced it into his fish. That's certainly considered two. Or you should reset kafloites or he crushed leek. And he put it into the fish. All agree shen shen tafshil. In this case, it's certainly considered two tafshil. Okay, so we have two versions of the Machlekes. According to our Mishnah, Bishamah, the ones who say you need two Tafshil, may still say one's enough. According to the Tanad we just mentioned, all agree you need two. There's a specific Machlekes when you have a glazed fish. According to Bishamah, it's considered one. According to Bishamah, two. On my Rava, Hilchasa Ketanad, they done. The Alokha follows our version, our Tana. But leave the Bishil, and of course with the Bishil, that what? Machlekes was... Bishama say two, we still say one, but still holds one tafsil is enough, and that's what we follow. Interesting discussion in Toysus, the Benetan actually says like this that Basilo are Bimekel, that's for sure. But what are they Bimekel about? He says like this In contrast to Bishama, who require you to set aside a little tafsil. For every tafshil you're going to cook on Yom Tov. Okay, so you're going to make three uh, tafshilin on Yom Tov for Shabbos. You have to set aside three separate tafshilin. Each one corresponding to the one that you're going to do on Yom Tov. That's Bisham HaShita. Bisham hold no. One tafshil is enough that accommodates, that addresses all your cooked food on Yom Tov. But, says Rebbe Natam, of course, if you want to cook and bake on Yom Tov, you can't just set aside a tafshel. You have to set aside a tafshel that allows cooking and a baked item to allow baking. That's how the Rentan learns the Gemara. The Reed disagrees. He says, no. No. Uh, according to uh, Be'ez, Be'ez Shammai, that's correct. You have to have a baked item to allow you to bake and a cooked item to allow you to cook and a con- and an insulated item to allow you to uh, insulate. Right? That was um, Hanani's version of Bishama. But according to Bishilo, no. A cooked item enables anything. However, Tesis concludes that the Ri himself, 
who is a nephew of Rabbi Tam, says, you know what, even though I disagree, but Lemaisa, uh, I'm not so confident. And, and Taisa's words, it's all in the bottom of the, uh, of the last Taisa's on the Amid. Two lines on the bottom. I didn't have the guts to override my uncle's Psaq, Rabbi Tam. And therefore, even according to us, you need two things. You need two things. A baked item and a cooked item to enable cooking and baking on Yom Tov. And that's how uh, we conduct ourselves. So, Allah Chalmai said, today we follow this, uh, this minute, this psak. And in fact, we set aside a cooked item and a baked item for the Erev Tavshu. It's interesting that Ben Yeshua <laughs> says that this discussion revolves around the Shaila discussed in the beginning of the Perak. What is the reason for Erev Tavshu? He says, according to Rabbi Natam, uh, we have to focus on the reason, which is that you don't want to overlook Shabbos. You want to make sure that there's some good things left over for Shabbos. So set aside a baked item, which will make sure that you'll leave over something nice, a, baked, a, a nice baked item on Yom Tov for Shabbos. Set aside a cooked item as well, which will ensure that you'll leave over a nice cooked item for Shabbos as well. So you need baked for baked, cooked for cooked. Whereas according to the Re, we focus on the other reason. The point of Eretav Shilin was to ensure the integrity of Yom Tov, to create that awareness that hacker Yom Tov is not a day meant to be used for uh, weekday preparations. Rather, it's only because you began preparing for Shabbos, you can finish it on Yom Tov. Therefore, he says, whatever you started, you started cooking, started baking, either way, you started preparing for Shabbos. And that would allow you to do anything on Shabbos, on Yom Tov, for the sake of Shabbos. You're only concluding the initiation, the, the preparation process, which you have begun yesterday. Interesting. Peshat of Pnei Yeshua. Continues the Gemara. Suppose he consumed or ate up his Erev on Yom Tov, that's it. You can no longer rely on it. On Rabbi Naktin, and however, we know this as a halacha lamaisa. And his chobi is sasai. Although, once the Erev is gone, you can no longer do anything. But let's say he began forming his batch. He started putting together his dough. And v'nechle ruve. Suddenly in the middle, his Erev disappears. He can, can complete the process. Because the point is, that you meant to have that hacker. And since when you began uh, creating that dough, you had the Erev intact. That allows you to con- conclude that process Till the uh, conclusion. Continues the Mishnah. Until we, now we spoke about Yom Tov falling out before Shabbos. What about Chalias Achar Shabbos? If Yom Tov falls out on a Sunday. We're going to see Rashi soon. Uh, it was a din, it was a minute to be matired on oneself. Uh, Guf and Kalim in honor of Yom Tov. So when do you do the tefillah? B'Sham Imrim, Mat Bilin, Esakol Mephniya Shabbos. You want to be toivel? Everything. People, Kalim before Shabbos. Says Rashi, the first wide line. Everything that needs to be toil, people, kill everything before Shabbos. The Kangal says, It's a chiv to become toil in honor of Yamtim. It's meant to be free of tumors. The Gemara applies this to Yamtim. Hilkach, therefore, say, Bishamai. In order to enter Yantav Bitahar, Yat will matter of Shabbos. Everything should take place before Shabbos. The Osula Hat will be Shabbos for Yantav. You can't be told on Shabbos for Yantav. That's be Shabbos Shit. We still disagree. Continues the Mishnah. We be still, I mean, look, it depends what. Kalim, I agree. We'll finish Shabbos. You can only be told with utensils before Shabbos. But other than Shabbos, but a person can be told on Shabbos himself, itself. And the Gemara explain the difference between the two. Now, Vishavan, both Vishavan and Vishavan agree. Shemashikin as Samayim. Let's say you have water which is Tomei. The only way to retire water, you can't be Tovel it. You can do Hashoka, connect it. Have it touch the water of the mikvah. Rashi says it's like planting the water into the ground. It's like connecting it back to the source. That makes it Tor. Shemashikin as Samayim, Bikli Evan Latar. And you have the water which is Tomei sitting in a stone utensil which is Tor, which doesn't need Tfila. You can immerse that slightly, slightly immerse into the mikvah. To get the water within a tar. Avol loy mat bilan, but you can't be mat bil. I mean, you can put, you can't put in a a kli which needs tefillah because you can't be toivel the kli, which is tummy. So the water is okay because that's not called tefillah. 
the method employed has nothing to do with tefillah. It's called zriya, hashaka. That can be done on Yom Tov. That can be done on Shabbos. What else can you do on Shabbos? Umat bilin megav legav. You can do this type of tefillah called gav legav. The Gemara explained. Mechabur lechampura. That also can be done even on Shabbos, even according to Beisham. Okay, let's review today's daf. We started with the Nusach of Tefillah. So Shabbos falls out on Yom Tov. We have three Shittas. According to Beishama, you add a bracha in your side, Yishman Esrei, for Shabbos and for Yom Tov, for a total of eight brachas in Yishman Esrei. According to Beisil, you stay with a standard seven, but in the middle bracha, you incorporate Yom Tov. You begin and end with Shabbos, and you mention Yom Tov in the middle. According to Rebbe, no. You meant to conclude by mentioning Yom Tov as well. And Ravina's version was, so you start and end with, you start with Shabbos, you insert Yom Tov in the middle, and you conclude by saying, Mekadesh, HaShabbos, Yisrael Vazmanim, the source of Kedusha Shabbos, which extends to Yisrael, which applied to the Zman and to the Yom Tov which they establish. What if Shabbos falls out on Rosh Chodesh and Chodesh and Moed? We have two versions. Koen Tana Kama. When it comes to Arv, Shachos, or Mincha, where even during a weekday, Rosh Chodesh, there isn't really much done to cover to Rosh Chodesh. Here as well on Shabbos, you just put in Yal V'yavi, Ba'avoyde, that's the Brach of Ratzia Hashem Lokein, Koen Tana Blazer, Ba'amoydim. By Mosef, that's unique. Uh, uniquely, Rosh Chodesh and Chalamoyed, because they also have a carbon Mosef. So over there, you elaborate a bit further. And in the middle of Bracha, Shemun Esra, you begin and end with Shabbos. In the middle, you mention the Rosh Chodesh and Chalamoyed. According to the other sheet of Shemun Lil, and Rosh Mo, B'nai Shabrech, and Broika, any tefillah throughout the Shabbos will grant special mention to Rosh Chodesh and Chalamoyed. You begin and end with Shabbos. And you mention, Dush Ziyayim in the middle of that Brach. When there's a two yant of two day yant of chutzlar, it's Thursday and Friday, you can go ahead and make the Erev Tafshil on the first day on condition. Regarding Erev Tchumen, Machlaikis, we learned that you can add quantity to the pot that's already being cooked for the sake of yant of. So certainly that applies to cooking. It's one tircha. When it comes to baking, which is a separate tircha, each loaf is separately. Went down to Kama. You cannot do this according to Abshem Balazar, that's the Alakala Maisa, in a case where it benefits. The initial loaf, such as increasing the heat in the oven, you can go ahead and add more loaves, even though you don't need it, need it for Yom Tov. Conclusion of the Gemara is, according to Rashi's Gir, said that the Isser applied for failing to place the Eret Shion applies to the person as well as his supplies. Let's say a person does make an Erev and goes and cooks in any case. Does it become Usser? We left it as a question mark. Now, what is considered Erev Tavshil according to our Mishnah? Bishami maintained two tafshilin, we still say one tafshil. And we have Hananya, who adds another thing that according to Bishamai, you need to set aside a baked item to enable baking, a cooked item to enable cooking, hatmana to enable hatmana. According to Bishilal, one tafshil is enough. You don't need two tafshilin. Now, according to the second version of the Gemara, Bishami hold, everybody holds you need two tafshilin. The question is regarding this dog with beta sha'allah. Kunda Bishama, it's one uh, single dish. The beta is bottle to the tongue. Kunda Bishila, a tree like two separate tafshilin. Concluded with being toivel on Shabbos and Yontif. According to Bishama, I do it beforehand. Kunda Bishila, kalem beforehand. But Adam is mutter. Bez Hashem, in the coming daf, we will elaborate further on this topic. Kotev to you and much hatzlach.